Well, it's personal between me and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire probably presents something the boxing game's missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. All right, so this is my official breakdown for Odebeck Komatov versus Raymond Ford. It is the day before the fight. You know, I'm about to, as you guys can see, I got my, I got my jacket ready and my hoodie ready. I'm, I'm layered up, ready to go to upstate New York for the fight. So I'm, I'm excited to go watch the fight and be in attendance. It'll be, it'll be fun. It'll be a whole lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to seeing how not just Odebeck, Komatov, Raymond Ford plays out, but also Renato Lopez versus Rhea Abbey. But you guys know, we've been talking about this fight for months here on True School Sports. Like, I, I don't think there's anywhere else in boxing where we talked about Komatov and Ford as much as we have here on True School Sports. I really do think that without True School Sports coverage, the Komatov-Ford fight would be a lot more boring Um far as content wise than, than it is because there's barely anybody talking about it. it's going it's, it's flying under a lot of people's radar but it's a significant fight for the featherweight division you know it's it's the first world title fight in the featherweight division for the 2024 and as you guys have heard me say many times here on true school sports 2024 is in fact the year of the featherweight division now as far as forward and combo talk, i just want to give you guys my breakdown because i've been like reviewing tape for weeks on both fighters um even after the whole Raymond Ford back and forth on social media, on Instagram and Twitter, uh, I still went back and I watched Raymond Ford. I gave him, I wanted to see if maybe I, I was being a hater and I saw something different with his, uh, you know, fights. Same thing with Komatov. I, I wanted to, you know, kind of put my palm, palm, palm down for a little bit because I, I do like the guy. I'm a fan of the guy. But I wanted to see, you know, from an objective standpoint, like what could Ford capitalize on, right? So it's a very, it's a really interesting fight. Um, I haven't checked the betting lines recently, but I do know that, like, for the most part, it's been pretty close, close odds. So, the, the you know, the, the odds makers, they really see this as a close fight. I think both men are, are very flawed. Like, like Ford, just we'll start, we'll start with Ford, right? Because he's the more known commodity to the boxing world. Ford is a guy that I've stated many times. He's sound matchroom boxing. Eddie Hearn promoted him straight out the amateurs. And I want to really highlight this, man. I want to really kind of get at Eddie Hearn here for a second because... How do you sign a guy straight from the amateurs and then you build him up and you put him on all these cards and you, 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 you sell the dream of, hey, we believe in this guy, we believe he'll be champion. And then when push comes to shove, he's, he's the B-side to Uzbek. I mean, no, 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 no disrespect to the Uzbeks, but out of all the Central Asian countries, Uzbeks don't ever become the A-side or anything. So the fact that Raymond Ford is the B-side to a fighter that wasn't previously, previously signed to sign a topic before the fight was made and it's an Uzbek fighter, it kind of shows you what Eddie Hearn really thinks about him. He doesn't, he, he doesn't believe in Raymond Ford. That, 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 that's the stone cold truth. And I do see this fight in a way from, from, the Hearn, from the Eddie Hearn side of things, from the promotional standpoint, is he's leaving Raymond Ford out to dry. Because if you sign someone from the amateurs, when it comes time for them, for them to fight for the world title, if you believe in them, that fighter should be afforded the opportunity to fight for the world title somewhere you know, in their hometown. Get the advantages, you know, but he's not getting that. So I just wanted to highlight that. But as far as Ford... You know, he has a reputation for being a slick reflex fighter, and he is a slick re re reflex fighter. But I went back and I, and I watched the, the Edward Vasquez fight because I've heard a lot of people, a lot of people that believe in Ford for this fight, they feel that the speed of Ford is going to give, is going to be enough to beat Komatov, right? So, so I went back to see what happened in the Vasquez fight. Why did he perform? Not so much what happened, but why did it happen? Why did he have that op night against Vasquez? Um, or even like an Aaron Perez. And I came to two conclusions when I w when watching that. The first conclusion was that Raymond Ford is a confidence fighter. He's a fighter that he operates off confidence. He he lives off confidence. He, you, you can just tell down to how he his ring his ring ring attire. He's always got very flashy ring trunks and um he's a he's a guy that if he you know he, he wants to look good, he he wants to look good, feel good, and fight good, right? And it's the same thing when he's actually in the ring. If he's mid-range, outside, has control of the pace, can do what he wants, slow the pace down, counter punch, sharp shoot, be slick, you know, taunt his opponent at times, because he's done that at times, you know, where he did a little crossover thing with the basketball that one time, then then he 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 feels like he's in control. But when he's not able to fight in, in that manner, then, then Ford has struggled against guys like Vasquez, right? Um... I noticed that when these guys put real pressure on him, not only did it Ford not like it, 
especially in the Vasquez fight. Vasquez isn't a faster fighter than Ford. Vasquez is not a more athletic fighter than Ford. And truthfully, I don't even think Vasquez is a more skillful fighter than, than Ford. But Vasquez was better conditioned than Ford. Vasquez had better timing than Ford. And as the conditioning and timing played a bigger role in rounds five, six, seven, eight, nine, you know, as the fight went on, I saw Raymond Ford begin to lose a lot of his slickness. I saw Raymond Ford begin to lose a lot of the, the things that make him, you know, uh, a highly regarded fighter by many. So, you know, we have a saying for guys that, that are only good for four rounds or three rounds. We call them front runners. And I do think that, you know, I'm not trying to judge him and say that's who he is. But I mean, all, all I can go off of, off is what he showed us in the ring so far. And the guys that put real pressure and volume on him, they... um. They gave him hell, and he's lucky he's still undefeated, to be honest with you, for being, for being totally honest. Now, the fight before that people like to use to, 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 to justify why they think he will beat Komotov, they like to use Reese Bilotti because Reese Bilotti was a fight that he took, I believe it was right after the Perez fight, and Bilotti was a, a good English contender, and Bilotti was a fighter that um, some people thought could beat Ford because he had, had a little bit of success domestically, and Ford stopped him. Now, I went back and I watched the fight just for this video, and the reason he stopped him is because he got off like three, four, five punches. You know, Raymond Ford ain't no big puncher, so he had to get off three or four punches like that in a row. I don't think that's going to be the case of Komotov. I don't think he'll be, I think he may land some nice counters, things like that, but he's not going to be landing three, four punches. So, um, yeah, those, that's what I noticed. When, when, when Ford, the more pressure you put on Ford, the 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 more he's gonna like lose his slickness and he he actually becomes more hittable the more the the when he gets fatigued the more fatigued he is the more hittable he becomes right so that's those are weaknesses I see on his end as, uh, apart from the strengths of him being quick and fast as far as Komotov because let, let's talk about Komotov because everyone talks about oh Komotov's got all this hype and I think I'm partially responsible for it because I was talking about Komotov here on YouTube before anybody and I've been very big about Komotov I've sang his praises for a long time. I've been seeing him spar and train since before he turned pro in 2021. And from the day I saw him train and spar, I thought he'd be world champion, right? So that being said, Oda Beck's biggest knock for me is the fact that his competition has not been up to par. You know, it hasn't been great competition. The best guy he's fought is Thomas Patrick Ward, right? And he, to his credit, he beat the brakes off Thomas Patrick Ward. He fought Andres Gregorian, tough guy who has had a bit of bad, he's had some bad form after the Komotov fight. Wound up by boxing him, but I don't really hold the Gregorian fight against him because I feel like, you know what, that was a fight where he had to get rounds in. He's been knocking all these guys out like it was nothing, so he had to get, he had to at least have one fight where he got some rounds in, and I think if I, that fight would actually, would actually kind of help him going into the fourth fight, but as far as his weaknesses, I think his, his lack of competition is one weakness, and I think, you know, much like a Ford, he has that Uzbek base, that Uzbek style, so his head's going to be right there on the center line. I know that um, with him being a guy that I would I would classify his style as a mid-range pressure fighter. He's an Uzbek fighter that likes to operate out that tall, lanky frame outside out, from the mid-range, but still put pressure on you. Because of how he fights, I think Ford is going to have his more than his fair share opportunities to um, counterpunch, and I think he will land some nice counterpunches in the first three to four rounds. Don't, I wouldn't even be surprised if Raymond Ford is up 3-1 or it's like 2-2 two, two or something like that Go after four rounds. But the fight ultimately will start in the fifth, sixth round. So my thing with Ford is you got a big guy, huge guy, a gargoyle, like he's a big guy at the weight class. He's going to have to go ahead and touch that body up real nicely. Like, I, I, you know, Ford doesn't have a big reputation for being a body puncher. But I think and this, this is the fight where he's going to have to really bite down on that mouthpiece and, and summon all the, all the anger and hatred that he has for people like me who says he's not going to be Odebeck Komotov. He needs to summon all that, bite down on that gum shield, and show the world what Camden, Camden New Jersey is about. And, 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 and when you get the chance, when Odebeck Komotov overshoots that jab and you slip on the inside, you know, touch that body up. Touch him with a, with, a, with a right hook to the body or a straight left to the body. And then use that, that, that speed and, and the athleticism to get out of range, you know, um, and just make Odebeck come on top have reset. That's that's what I feel his path to victory is. And maybe as he's boxing and maybe as he's being sharp, he catches him with a big shot and is able to hurt him, right? That, that, that's what I feel. Um, Raymond Ford, I don't think, is going to be able to do what he, what he did against Magdaleno. A lot of people like to use the Magdaleno fight as well as a fight that they say, oh, he beat a former world champion. But you got to look at past the accomplishments sometimes. You got to look at style, Magdaleno was a smaller guy who came up in weight. 
Magdalena was also a fighter that doesn't throw a whole lot of punches. He wants to be the, 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 the low output, you know, you know, sharp fighter on the outside. So he wasn't going to do that against Ford because Ford's naturally bigger and younger than a guy like Magdaleno. Um, so I thought that fight, even though all respect to the champion Magdaleno, I thought that style was tailor-made for him and Ford, just, just, just being honest. So, um, you know, it's an interesting fight because I feel like both guys have their vulnerabilities. Um, it really, to me, it, the, the, the question for me with this fight and the, and the reason why I'm picking Komatov and I've been so adamant that I'm picking Komatov since this fight was ever mentioned is because I do think Raymond Ford is a front runner. Now it's it's his job to show me otherwise that he's not a front runner, and his job not even just me. It's his job to show himself. More importantly, that's that's the most important thing. Forget BT, forget the world, forget your the critics or the haters. It's more important for Ford to show himself that he's not a front runner, because there's gonna come a time in this fight. It could be the third round, it could be the fifth round, but it'll 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 happen at some point. Komatov is gonna come forward. He's gonna he's gonna turn the volume up on Ford. And Ford's going to need to have the answers. He, he's going to need to be able to handle those nervy moments when Komatov um, gets into the ropes and, and, and starts hitting with that power jab. And, and, and um, yeah, it's going to be – he's going to have to have the answers to, to those questions. And if he doesn't, he's going to lose his fight and lose handily. Now, what I ultimately think is going to happen in this fight – oh, actually, before, before I get to the outcome, a couple of things to watch from both fighters, right, from both sides, okay? So Ford – one thing Ford's added to his game over the last, like, three or four fights – he has his little stutter step, double feint, um, and he has a nice lead left hand. So I would like Ford to throw to 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 use that nice little st uh, double step, st double stutter step feint to kind of break the rhythm of uh, Odebeck Komatov. And then um, you know when 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 it, when the time comes and there's lulls in the action, shoot that sh lead straight left hand. That's a punch that Ford has that he doesn't really throw. More, I feel like if he threw it more often, he would actually hurt guys a lot more. So I like that punch. I like that punch, and I like that little part of the way he sets up his punches. That little double stutter step feint that he's got. It's, it's really good, you know. And with a guy like Ford, uh, with the athleticism he's got, that's the kind of uh, move in the ring that will get an uh, opponent to move and break the rhythm. So you got that. Now from the Komatov side of things, I'm, 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 I'm gonna highlight this for you guys. If Ford gets hurt early in the fight, I'm gonna tell you guys the exact punch it's gonna be. All right. Odebeck Komatov loves to throw this catch and counter uh, left uppercut. So sometimes he'll use his legs and he'll dart out of range and then he'll make you fall short and he'll immediately counter with the uppercut to either the body or the head. Or he'll go to the high guard, all right? And then if you touch him, he'll catch the shot and then he'll, he'll counter with the left uh, uh, uppercut up top. That's a punch. If four gets hit with that punch, I'm telling you guys, whether it be in the... It could be early in the fight, middle of the fight. If he gets hit with that punch when he's not expecting it, when he doesn't see it, or maybe maybe when he's in the middle of an Odebeck Komatov onslaught, he's going to get stopped, you know? So he needs to be cognizant of that. Um, and yeah, those are just some things from both sides you guys can look out for, things I like from both fighters. Um, but ultimately, look, I my my when this fight first got signed, my initial thoughts were that I thought Komatov was going to stop Ford because I just think he's going to be too big, too strong, too good. And that, and that might still be the case. But I think that the way I think this fight's going to play out is I think Ford will have some good moments in the first four to five rounds boxing, right? And then I think uh, Odebeck Komatov's versatility as a boxer will take over because people just think that I'm picking Komatov because he's a knockout artist and he's knocked guys out. And that's not why I'm picking him. He can outbox him in Ford. And, I, and that's ultimately what I think is going to happen. I think Ford is going to get hit with something big in the first four to five rounds. And um, he's going to make that conscious decision to, you know, survive. I don't think he's going to bite down on his gum shield. I think he will survive in the fight. He'll, he'll make that sub subconscious decision to survive in the fight. And I think he'll go into survival mode. And I think um, his legs and his athleticism will be enough for him to survive. I think Komatov will will try to find him and get the knockout. He won't get it because I think Komatov, I think forward would be a little bit too crafty for him as far as surviving. But I think Komatov will land shots, he'll outwork him, and I think it'll be like a, something like a, you know, like a 116, 112 type of UD, uh, maybe 117, 111, or one, uh, one of those one of those scores with a knockdown. I think I think that'll be the case. Um, so yeah, that's that's my that's my breakdown. Those are some things to look out for. Some things going into the fight. I think uh, Komatov wins a workmanlike decision. I think Ford gets uh, beat up and goes into survival mode, and. Um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm hoping for a better fight. Honestly, I'm, I'm, I hope I'm wrong. I think, but I just think that you know, I, I can't, I can't let um, p 
people or for himself try to sway my opinion. I've watched the film. I've watched him against Vasquez. I've watched him against Perez. I've watched him against Sicario Lucas. I've watched him against Magdaleno. I've watched him from his pro debut against Yuc Johnson. I've watched him in that one fight he had in Oklahoma where he was like three times bigger than the guy. And uh, he wore a jean jacket vest to the ring and didn't get a knockout. I've watched, I've watched Raymond Ford a ton, so I know his whole fight came inside and out. So he's like, I'm not talking about somebody I don't know about here. He's a good fighter. I think he's a confidence fighter that overly relies on his athletic ability. And I think when push comes to shove and he's asked those hard questions, he's going to get hit. He's going to go into survival mode. And um, he's just going to lose a workmanlike decision. And, and, and honestly, to me, that's the best case scenario for him is to lose a workmanlike decision to Odebeck Komotov. Because the worst outcome for Ford could be you know, him getting beat up brutally and stopped within seven rounds, six, seven rounds. That, if, if Komatov fights to the best of his abilities, I think that's where he's going to, that, 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 that's what could happen. But I think Ford will just be too crafty to not get stopped. He'll go into survival mode and Komatov will win a workmanlike decision with a knockdown, something like that. So um, we'll see how it goes. I'm looking for Ford to a, a really good fight. I hope um, Freeman Ford gives a better fight than I'm thinking he's going to give um, because I just, I, I can't, I can't uh, kid myself. You know, he's, a, he's shown himself to be a front runner in his career. He's a confidence fighter, and if he if Komatov in the first five rounds puts on any pressure on him and, and continues to build off that, I don't see Ford uh, winning the fight. But look, it's, it's, it's a good fight, good fight for the featherweight division. I respect Ford. If I'll tell you this, and I'll end, I'll end it on this note because I'll, I'll, I'll be positive about Ford to end the video. If Raymond Ford beats Komatov, I would consider it. I'm not gonna sit here and say it's this massive, massive upset because I do think it's a you know the odds are the odds for the re for a reason. But I, but I just think that, you know, when you factor in that he's on a top rank card, he need, like he needs a knockout, guys. Let's let, let's just be real. He's gonna need a knockout. Top rank didn't just sign Komatov to sign Komatov. They signed Komatov to 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 put him in the mix with the other featherweights like Rhea Rhea Abe and and Venado Lopez. And I just think that, you know, Eddie Hearn has left Ford out to dry, and it's really kind of sick. Like I, I'm, I have my things to say about Ford, but really, it's kind of sick what Eddie Hearn's done to Ford. Because you signed this guy out the amateurs. You were in his DMs, you know, all these things to, to, to sign him when he was a national Golden Gloves champion. And then when it comes time, and I, and I get it, like Raymond Ford hasn't necessarily been like the most personable guy like in boxing. And he's shushed the fans in the ring. And he always thinks everyone's against him. He's always crying on Twitter. I, I get all of it. He's not the most marketable guy. But still, you signed him on, you signed him on. You signed him out the amateurs. You had big holes for him. I remember him selling a good game, and when push comes to shove, you didn't win the purse. You didn't do the bare minimum, which is win the damn purse, but for the guy who signed straight out of the amateur. So I really am more sick of Eddie Hearn than anything for this fight. But, um, yeah, I just think um, Ford will go into survival mode at some point in the fight, and um, Komatov won't have necessarily the, the feet to, to cut the ring out the way he needs to to stop him, but he will land enough punches to outwork him and beat him. So, uh, yeah, older back Komatov, UD. That's my breakdown. That's my prediction. Give me your comments down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take your eyes. Thank you for watching another video on the untouchable True School Sports Empire. For more great boxing content just like this video, click right here and make sure to subscribe. Much love from sunny South Florida.